Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we're looking at a Red 9 Mauser broom handle, and uh, we'll spend a lot of time with the introduction of why they're called a Red 9. Obviously the grips are, uh, I've got the big Red 9 on them, and these were part of a 150,000 gun order that the German military put in during World War I in 1916 for 150,000 9 millimeter Luger uh, broom handles. Obviously the regular broom handle caliber is 7.63 Mauser and um, the Germans wanted to standardize because the 9 millimeter Luger uh, was the standard German sidearm so you get these in 9 millimeter, easier ammunition supply, all that good stuff. 150,000 were not delivered I believe only about 120 some thousand were made. Um, this is actually a fairly early one. It is in the 16,000 serial number range. And it has got the standard Crown U commercial proof, which you will see on pretty much all Mausers right here. And this one is interesting because it is actually a shooting prize from Finland. A lot of these guns ended up in Finland. Um, trying to get that to focus on that. And uh, a lot, like I said, a lot went to Finland. A lot are coming out of Finland at this time. Uh, when I say a lot, I don't mean a great deal. I mean a few. Uh, they're still fairly rare guns. They are pretty sought after. And I believe that means uh, this was a Civil Guard gun that was given as a uh, shooting prize. And I believe that's gonna be third place. I could be wrong. And this is just sort of the district and all that good stuff. I'm sure there's somebody gonna be somebody who uh, understands Finnish a lot better than me and can translate that better for me. I would love to hear it in the comments if you can offer some insight. But like I said, I believe this is a shooting prize Civil Guard gun for um, third place. Uh, these all had a standard rear sight of 50 to 500 meters, whereas a lot of commercial broom handles had a uh, up to a thousand meter rear sight, which is just far too optimistic shooting for uh, a pistol cartridge, even with the shoulder stock. You've got your nice fire blue all along here, this one is in excellent condition. The fins took really nice care of this gun. You've got your standard chamber marking here. You got your serial number there. You got your standard front sight here. And flip this guy over. You got your red nine again. One uh, thing worth noting is the fit and finish of red nine grips is oftentimes gonna be kind of poor there's a lot of uh, overlap here. And uh, really that was just sort of uh, the exigencies of World War I. You're not gonna have the typical Mauser fit and finish that you would expect on a peacetime gun that was only for the commercial market. So these are matching grips. You take these off, these actually have the last three digits of the serial number stamped into them. They are original to the gun. But obviously the, the fit is, leaves a bit to be desired on these. And this one does have a shoulder stock, uh, just don't have it with the gun right now. Uh, your serial number is also repeated here and here. And you've got your standard NS, stands for new type safety hammer, with the last three digits of the serial number repeated on that as well. Also your bolt is gonna have the same thing last three of the serial number, actually the last four of the serial number. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. With your crown U proof and your rear sight, which is adjustable, you're also gonna have part of the serial number stamped on your bolt stop here. Uh, these often did break and you'll find them replaced on even very nice guns. So if you're checking a broom handle, it is worth uh, checking to make sure that serial number does match on these. They do get changed out pretty often. So finding one with a match serial number is important. 
and uh, definitely something to look at when you're looking at all the serial numbers on a gun. Um, get this back. There we go. And we'll open this gun up just to take a look at the insides. So when the safety is up, the gun is safe. Pull it down. Like I said, this gun has already been cleared. You can cock your hammer. We'll put this guy down. And we'll just, ah, nothing like doing this one-handed. Okay, pulled the bolt back and without filming my iPod, you can see, now I've talked a lot about that these actually had a divot in the follower and this one does not. This red nine is all factory, all match. That follower does match the gun and it is original, but there is no divot in it. Whereas most nine millimeter factory guns had a divot to help feeding of the uh, nine millimeter straight cased. Whereas the 30 Mauser was, um, was actually bottlenecked and did not need a divot to help feeding. So this one does not have that. And that's just kind of interesting. Uh, so, you know, people always say, oh, all red nines will have a divot. Well, they don't. Some do, some don't. And this one does not. Uh, the other thing this one does not have, even though it's a fairly early gun that probably would have been in the serial range accepted by the German military, it does not have a German uh, military acceptance proof right here. Some do, some don't. Some that saw military service do, a lot don't, and this one definitely does not. Um, pretty much all the ones that went to Sweden, Finland, and other Scandinavian countries do not have any kind of um, acceptance mark right here. Uh, the ones that do have a little bit of an acceptance mark do actually command some premium. And then if you look here, you've just got your standard. These are just uh, seem to be factory numbers and markings that were part of the um, process of making the gun and really don't mean a lot. I don't know that they've ever been definitively translated for what they mean. You'll see stars and uh, a stylized M. You'll see all kinds of different things down here, but nothing really to get excited about. And one other thing to look at on these, when you, this one doesn't have too much, but when you move them in and out of the stock, you're going to leave scratches. This one doesn't have many at all, but that's just something to be cognizant of. If you have a broom handle with a stock, the more you uh, move it in and out of that stock, it's going to scratch it up. So my recommendation really is don't do it. There's no reason to do it. Um, just know what fits in the stock and that's all you really need to do. You're just going to save your gun if you don't do that. So just a uh, standard broom that went to Finland and uh, was a shooting prize. And I don't know that probably never saw any combat use uh, given the condition it's in. And uh, if this was a third place prize, I'd love to see what your first place prize was. And that's all I can say. But hope you've enjoyed uh, taking a look at an interesting broom handle with an interesting history. And once again, any of our uh, Finnish viewers, if you have any insight into what exactly that says, or if I was wrong about it, I would appreciate some input. And uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll do, be doing more videos in the near future. Thank you again.